Um, but I do want to get um, some questions in from our listeners. We'll do a quick fire round from uh, people okay, who go. send in questions for Sally. Um, if you have questions for our guests, you can send them in to our Instagram or Twitter at Politicon, or you can email them podcasts at Politicon.com. Ian from, Tr- I don't write these, so some of them I've read through and they, I don't want to take credit for some of these, um, but I, I'm going to ask them anyway. Ian from Toronto actually asks, are Antifa and MAGA two sides of the same coin? Uh, no. Is that how quick do you want my question? That's, a, that's perfectly quick for me. I mean, I, no, I, mean, I look, actually, the reason Antifa I said I don't, because I don't think Antifa actually, is not a organization, I, I don't believe. A, I mean, it's a thing. I mean, I'm sure there are people, I get they're there, but it's never amassed any political power whatsoever. It has they don't no have organi- hats. It has no, I actually, <laughs> honest to God, I, I'm a, listen, I'm a certified card carrying lefty and I've never met a, an Antifa. So I don't know what it is either. I'm going to go with... I'm I personally am anti-fascist. I'm not a supporter of fascism, that is for sure. Um, so if that's what are, it means. But anyway. <laughs> I mean, I've never even seen it written with a capital letter, by the way. I'm noticing even on the on my sheet here, it's it's not capitalized from Ian. So Ian, you don't even have it as a proper noun. Um, it's not a group. Um, <laughs> Jonah from Brooklyn asks, would jobs and a return to normal put an end to the riots and the protests? I guess he's asking how much, how much is coronavirus, how much has COVID exacerbated this situation? You know, no, I mean, it, it, it it is, uh, you know, it became a convenient and politicized, frankly. And I mean, this is one of the great tragedies of, you know, the, you know, the Trump presidency was his decision to politicize a deadly virus. And, you know, what I think is really tragic is that ultimately it will do more harm to his supporters. I and mean, I think there will be a long tail uh, of his, uh, you know, anti-mask messages and his rallies and so forth that will prove to be, um, you know, viciously deadly more toward his side of the aisle. And that is, that is wildly irresponsible on his part and, and just intensely tragic. Um, do I think, you know, but for COVID, but for the shutdowns, but for the job losses, et cetera. Um, no, I think in fact, you know, for example, we know that a lot of the people who came to riot, were employed, they were staying in hotels, they were flying in airplanes. So, you know, it becomes a, uh, you know, convenient excuse for people who, again, may or may not be materially suffering, but who certainly use the specter of the suffering of some Mm -hmm. to pinpoint blame. But let's be clear, this sort of, again, this White when your when your support base when your fear, support base has yachts and boat parades, <laughs> they're yeah, not necessarily yeah. working class. <laughs> and this is like the, the, you know, for again, fifty years, fifty years of stoking white racial resentment and fear as a political strategy. It has just always found you know new outlets, um, but it is it is it is you know been cons- it's been a consistent through line on the right of the Republican Party. In good economic times and bad, sickness and I'm, health. I'm going to do one more from the from the listeners, and then I have two or maybe three okay. uh, more from my own, from my own brain. Um, Miriam from Memphis. Miriam from Memphis asks, "Do you think our troops are more likely to be deployed under a Biden administration?" Um, I hope not. I mean, I think the reality is, is, you know, that there uh, are different kinds of Democrats. There are more um, hawkish Democrats and and those who are far more reluctant. Do we know? I mean, he was he he, chaired the Foreign Affairs Committee, but did he? Is he a right? He is definitely a more um, he is more historically interventionist for sure. Um, But I think he is surrounding himself with people who are, you know, clear eyed and cautious also, uh, you and know, he's a his, diplomat, isn't he? I mean, he's more of a he diplomatic, a, he believes in diplomacy. Yes. And I think he also, you know, what, listen, what Joe Biden's greatest gift is to be able to read the room. 
Right. You know, he is a master politician in that particular sense. And I think he knows that our national appetite for violence, imperialism, war is at an all-time low. Um, and I, I, either way, what I do think is true, again, especially because of his own personal history, uh, that does give me some comfort and confidence is that he would be intensely um, thoughtful and careful and reluctant to send anyone's children into war uh, as his own son did. Hey, I'm Clay Aiken. To hear the full episode, subscribe to This Politicon Podcast on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, or wherever you listen to pods. Please subscribe, rate, and review the show. Go to Politicon.com, follow at Politicon on social media, and listen to a new pod episode of How the Heck every Thursday.